So to summarize the concept of value, the most important thing to remember is that no single method is sufficient to estimate fair market value. My interpretation of the Valmin Code is that more than one method of valuation is required uh, to comply with Valmin and to provide a valuation that you can rely on. The approaches taken must be tr transparent, objective and rigorous and all assumptions must be stated to you, the reader, so that you understand how this uh, competent valuer, this specialist, has gone about the valuation. You need to recognise that the value is both time and circumstance specific and it must be realistic, rational and logical. Realistic is often the hardest approach. And the final selection of valuation requires a good understanding of geology uh, and the technical conditions of that mine. So what do I commonly see? Presentation of net present value as fair market value without explanation. This is not correct. Uh, net present value, as stated before, is not fair market value. It may be fair market value uh, if the valuer can see that a buyer is prepared to pay the net present value for that project. That may be the case, but it's unlikely. Quite often I see no presentation of a range of values. If the report does not present you with a range of values, it's not Valmin compliant, and the person preparing it probably does not know what they are doing. I often see competent persons endorsing documents prepared by others. In certain jurisdictions, um, uh, in one jurisdiction in particular, real estate agents are preparing mine valuations and having them signed off by a purportedly competent person. This is completely inappropriate and is a significant danger uh, for investors who don't understand uh, that the value is going to be inher inherently inappropriate. Usually I'll see a deficient document uh, providing a single valuation technique rather than supporting the results of that valuation using other valuation techniques such as typically an analysis of comparable transactions. I often see uh, second tier consultancies and one man bands applying valuations with very little depth. They simply don't have the resources or depth to analyse these projects to a suitable uh, level uh, that avoids a formulaic approach and always I see inappropriate discount rates being applied. It is not uncommon uh, to obtain capital at 4 or 6 percent out of China. That does not represent your discount rate. Cost of capital and an appropriate discount for a mining project are two very different things. So in conclusion a significant number of valuations are inappropriate because the underlying resources and reserves are poorly estimated and understood. The surrounding conditions, culture, climate and infrastructure are not accounted for. The metallurgy is poorly understood. Inappropriate schedules have been applied without modification. These schedules inform the cash flow model and if the cash flow model has not been uh, appropriately modified, then the valuation will be defective. Markets have not been identified, typically, for um, marginal projects. Projects that are producing uh, a concentrate or perhaps an iron ore that is very marginal acceptability to a customer are going to very much struggle and their value must be um, moderated accordingly. An investor cannot rely wholly on the listing rules for protection. You need to make your own decision and if a valuation has been prepared competently, then you should have enough information to inform that decision. This brings you to the reporting codes, the JORC code, NI43, I-01, Valmin and so on. These codes are about risk reduction and that risk reduction comes through appropriate reporting considering transparency, materiality and competence on the part of the valuer, the competent person. If you understand the risk, you can ameliorate it.
I'm a uh, mining engineer and geologist. I'm not a, uh, uh, a market speculator. However, uh, very early in my career, uh, a completely insane but ultimately very wise old Welsh mining engineer uh, once told me or gave me some advice that I've followed ever since, and that is, if it rusts, it's good. So something like iron rusts. There's always going to be demand for iron. Mm -hmm. Copper uh, similarly deteriorates and effectively rusts. There's always demand for copper. Zinc, uh, nickel, all of these commodities will ultimately be consumed uh, through uh, corrosion or through simply wearing out. Therefore, I'm fairly conservative in the, the way that I approach things. And uh, uh, I always have uh, a great deal of confidence that there will always be demand for these fundamental commodities.